the Cavaliers making a difference maker trade for them. A three-team trade with the big name Antoine Jameson going from Washington to Cleveland. Jameson still has two years and $28 million left on his contract. Now, here's a look at the details of the trade. The Cavs get Jameson along with point guard Sebastian Telfair, while the Wizards get Big Z, Al Thornton, and Cleveland's 2010 first-round pick. The Clippers, meanwhile, get Drew Good. So, we'll start with you, J.A., and J.J. Hickson staying in Cleveland. That's what the Cavs wanted. How did they get this deal done? I think that's the key element because the Washington Wizards all along wanted J.J. Hickson. They wanted three things by moving Anton Jameson. They wanted to get some financial relief. They wanted a good young player, and they wanted a draft pick. And Cleveland was willing to provide two of those, but they were balking at Hickson. But the Cavs were willing to include Hickson in the deal with Amari Stoudemire. That would have been a prerequisite of getting that trade done. Cleveland held out on that. Phoenix wasn't quite ready to pull the trigger. So what happened was the Clippers got involved because they basically decided their season was over. You saw that when they moved Marcus Camby to Portland. All of a sudden, Al Thornton and Sebastian Telfair come involved. You can get Thornton to the Washington Wizards. That satisfies the requirement for a young player. All the other pieces fell into place. Anton Jameson to the Cavaliers. Now that extra piece, that all-star that LeBron James has been working for, looking for. And the Washington Wizards, meanwhile, they can get maybe 18 to $20 million right. under the cap. The Clippers can get 18 or so million under the cap. Both teams are going to try to make a loan at a premier free agent. But the Cavs, meanwhile, already have their guy that they're looking for. Yeah, this isn't the first time the Cavs GM Danny Ferry has tried to make a move around the trade deadline. You'll remember back in 2008, he picked up Ben Wallace, Joe Smith, Wally Zerbiak, and Delonte West. West is the only player still in Cleveland from that trade. He followed that up by adding Mo Williams in the following offseason. And then before this season, he acquired Shaquille O'Neal from the Suns. So, Legs, I ask you, how will Antoine Jameson fit on the court for the Cavs? Well, he gives them versatility and flexibility. And nowadays in the Eastern Conference, you have to have a four that's comfortable going out to the three-point line, not only defending, but also being able to spread the floor himself. When you look at the Orlando Magic, they've got a Rashard Lewis. Boston Celtics go out and get Rasheed Wallace, basically for that matchup. Even the Atlanta Hawks, the other top contending team in the Eastern Conference, have a guy like Josh Smith, who's athletic, versatile, plays out in the perimeter. Cavs never really had that luxury. They were slow, methodical, and sluggish up front. Now you've got a guy that can go out there and he's comfortable. He's one of the better uh, outside shooters that we have when he plays the power forward position in this league. Phenomenal rebounder, always has been throughout his career. Gets his own shot when he wants to. But most importantly, and I played with Anton Jameson in Golden State, he is a great presence in the locker room. He's a leader. He's a guy that's not going to pout. He's not getting his number called. He'll figure out a way to go out and contribute. And I know he is as happy as anybody can be <laughs> to be in a situation where he can now play deep into the postseason and potentially win a championship after leaving what he left in Washington. If this is the situation, LeBron was sitting back today saying, I need to have another guy. Is this enough? to keep LeBron in Cleveland? I don't know. I don't think anything, uh, any of this is going to impact his decision at all. I really don't. People are so concerned about whether well, he wins one or doesn't win one, who he's playing with, who's built around him. I think LeBron James is going to either take on the challenge of going to a city like Chicago, New York, or Miami, rebuilding that franchise and leading them to a championship, particularly in New York, a cornerstone franchise in this league, Jay. If you could take the Knicks to a championship, can you think of any greater accomplishment in sports or being put on a higher pedestal? I think that's going to challenge LeBron James or his loyalty to stay in Cleveland. Those are the two things that's why me, I think it would be bigger for down. him, uh, basically a native of the Cleveland area, to be able to take that, you know, what we got in franchise for so many years, a town that hasn't had any type of professional sports success since the 1960s. I think in LeBron's mind, that would be bigger than a city where he's never lived. The New York Knicks, yeah, they have that lore and that history, but they haven't done anything themselves for more than three decades. So I think LeBron wants to be in a situation where he can win a championship, wherever that might be. I've heard from his camp that championship is the number one priority. And so now Cleveland looks a little bit more appealing from that regard. And I do know this, in the long run, they are gonna be happier with Anton Jameson than they would be with Amari Stoudemire. I think he's a better fit for what they do. And he's also a guy that you don't have to worry about what he's gonna to bring to the locker room every day in terms of his temperament. He's an upbeat guy and he's ready to go out there and help but them. But he is six years older than Amari. So That's if you true. are thinking long-term, that has to be a factor.